This slide outlines the types of atoms that we find in conjugated systems, including both carbons and heteroatoms. Heteroatoms can contribute one and only one lone pair to a conjugated system, provided that heteroatom is not already involved in pi bonding. And we noted this earlier. So if a, an atom such as this nitrogen here is already engaged in pi bonding, its p orbital is already being used for bonding. So any additional lone pairs do not participate in the pi system or not part, part of the pi system. They're occupying hybrid orbitals and they're part of the sigma bonding system we would say. And the nomenclature here with C and 2 and 3, O1 and O2, we're going to make use of to distinguish between these different types of atoms. Particularly, N2 and N3 atoms are very different, and O1 and O2 atoms are very different in terms of their orbital occupancy, how many electrons they're contributing to a given conjugated system, etc. So first, let's start with carbon. And your standard doubly bonded carbon just has one electron in its 2p orbital here. And we can all, we can think of, you may be wondering, you know, why is one electron drawn here? Where is that one electron in the structure above? Well, the pi bond is made from the overlap of two adjacent 2p orbitals on carbon in this case, and each carbon brings one electron into the mix, right? So we can think of each carbon as bringing one electron in, and we're seeing that one electron in this orbital picture below. So that electron is occupying a p orbital, and overlap of those adjacent p orbitals creates this pi bond. So we can think about it like the pi bond has two electrons within it, or each carbon contributes one pi electron to the conjugated system, that kind of thing. The N2 structure is similar to the carbon, just has a lone pair where carbon has an additional bond because of the additional electron and nitrogen relative to carbon, right? So here, nitrogen again is participating in pi bonding already. So this one electron right here is one of the two electrons in this pi bond, the other one coming from the carbon right here. And notice, the lone pair is in the sigma system. It's in the plane of the molecule, which is in green here. And so it's not participating in pi bonding conjugation, delocalization, resonance. It's free to be donated, for example, is one way we'll, we'll think about this in the future. It's free to be given away um, to an electrophile or a, a Bronsted acid. The N3 case is very different. The N3 nitrogen, which is called an N3 nitrogen, by the way, because there are three atoms connected to that nitrogen. N2 is called an N2 because there are two atoms connected to that nitrogen. The N3 nitrogen has a lone pair and no pi bonds in the all-neutral resonance structure anyway. So this lone pair can participate in pi bonding. And we saw an example, actually a couple of examples of this previously, with this lone pair being donated to establish a CN pi bond in the alternative resonance form for this molecule. I encourage you to pause the video and draw that resonance form now if you need additional practice drawing resonance forms of conjugated systems. You'll want to be able to recognize this resonance very, very quickly and recognize that that lone pair is part of the conjugated system. So those two electrons contribute to the pi electron count, for example, in this structure. The O1 is what we'll call in the future a carbonyl oxygen. It's an oxygen connected to one atom, typically by a double bond when neutral. And notice here again, that oxygen in the orbital picture has one electron in a p orbital, and that one electron is one of the two electrons in this pi bond right here, the other one coming from the carbon right here. So this oxygen is contributing one electron to the conjugated system. The two lone pairs on that oxygen are both part of the sigma system. They're both in the plane of the carbonyl group here in green. And so, again, they're not delocalized, they don't participate in resonance, all that good stuff. They're free to be given away to an electrophile or a Bronsted acid. They're not engaged in conjugation whatsoever. The O2 oxygen is a different story. An O2 oxygen is a two-connected oxygen atom. And um, in that case, one of the lone pairs is part of the pi system. Again, pause the video and draw an alternative resonance form that engages that lone pair, showing how it is actually engaged in pi bonding with the carbon next door. In the orbital picture, that lone pair that is delocalized is in a 2p orbital. So this oxygen contributes two electrons to the pi system. 
Finally, just to loop back to this one more time, in the O1 case, notice that we can think about it a lot like the carbon-carbon double bond, where we split the CO double bond into single electrons on the oxygen and carbon, and we see that carbon picture re-emerging, as well as this O1 picture with one pi electron being uh, donated into the pi system to establish this pi bond here.